Beautiful, beautiful. Well, welcome everybody that is joining us today live in the GoDaddy small business community. Uh, for all the community members that are joining us in the conversation, we absolutely love it because this is a conversation, right? It's an opportunity to listen, learn, leverage, connect, uh, share in the chat, and of course, grow because we're all coming from different walks of life, different uh, environments, different styles of business. And that's why we have these meetups to provide some clarity, some consistency, and some communication on what is happening in small business and how we can thrive better together. So thank you to everybody that's here live. And of course, to those that have to listen to this, not live, right? The recording afterwards. Uh, give yourself some grace because business has to happen. Uh, and that's part of the lifestyle. So thank you to everybody that's supporting us. Um, I'm so excited for our guest today. Uh, Lindsay Hotmeyer is the founder of Storyhouse 15. She has a fantastic journey into what she calls story copy, and she's going to share her voice with us today. Lindsay, before we get started and have you kind of give us the spiel on where you came from, right? What made you so amazing and so great? Because we've already had endorsements uh, about you. We like to have everybody that's on the call introduce themselves first so that they feel committed to and they feel present and you know who is here to listen and support you. So uh, I'll lead the dance. My name is Adam Griggs. I'm your moderator, uh, and I always have the privilege of leading these amazing conversations, and I'm so very grateful. So I'm going to turn it over to Rachel with the GoDaddy team. Good morning. Good afternoon. Rachel McCool from GoDaddy, and I actually manage a series of programs and engagement uh, with our wonderful community, and our LinkedIn group is part of that, and we're just grateful for Adam to to talk find and in in the schedule these these um interviews with people like Lindsay so and Patty's done one and Amy's done one so we just really appreciate all of you um and your wisdom and expertise so Lindsay looking forward to hearing from you today and of course thank you Rachel for all you do in the community Jonathan do you want to introduce yourself Hi, everyone. My name is Jonathan Graziano. I am also on the GoDaddy team. Uh, I work on the marketing side of things, focusing on social media and social engagement. Um, it's a, it's amazing to be able, I'm loving these uh, meetups in the new year because something about just the fact that we've been doing this for so long has really started to to sink in and and prove that it's like really, you know, this is a thing that will continue and is solidified. And it's just, it's just wonderful. Um, I'm also so excited uh, to hear from Lindsay today. Um, you spell your name, Lindsay, exactly how my, the twin sister, Lindsay, who also oh. spells it A-Y. So whenever I meet an A-Y Lindsay, I'm always like, these are good people. <laughs> E-Y Lindsay's, I have no idea what to do with. Hi, um, I'm Elena. I'm also on Team GoDaddy. I work with uh, Rachel on our community engagement and experiences team, um, which is like our virtual events and this LinkedIn group. I've had so much fun getting to meet all you guys and hear your stories and get to know you all a little bit better. So I'm really excited for another year of doing that. And I am happy to meet you today, Lindsay. Thank you so much, Elena and, and Jonathan. You guys being on the GoDaddy team, uh, being here to support us means the world. So thank you for that. And a reminder real quick before I turn it over to Amy and then Patty, uh, it is okay to come cameras off too for those that are listening. We are completely open to life happening in the background as long as we're growing together. So thank you for that. Uh, Amy, why don't you introduce yourself and then we'll have Patty. Yeah, hi. Uh, my name is Amy Benzowitz. I work at a company called LB Digital. And we provide audience solutions and data to the marketing community. Uh, I've been part of this uh, GoDaddy Clarify community for, I think it's about six months now. It's been fabulous learning from all different people and meeting all of you. And, uh, you know, I've always loved listening to stories. And, and one of my goals this year is to kind of get better at, at telling stories. How do I say the things that, that I know about? So uh, really excited to hear from you, Lindsay. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to Patty now. Thank you. So I'm Patty Former, and I own a boutique marketing and media agency, as well as publishing a magazine called Marketing Media Money. Um, I've actually been a part of the community now for quite a while. Um, I appreciate that you guys noticed that I was missing <laughs> in some when I wasn't here and stuff, though. But I have to tell you, this is one of my favorite parts of the week. And I love it. So I'm happy to uh, be back. And when Adam literally told me over breakfast that Lindsay was the speaker this week, I was like, oh, what a great week for me to come back <laughs> since I know her personally. And um, and um, you guys are really in for a treat, not just in what her story is, but in our whole process. So um, it, I'm just really glad to be back. So uh, 
I'll be seeing you guys every week again, and I'm looking forward to it. So um, thanks so much for you guys. And I'm excited, Lindsay. <laughs> I'm excited too. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, everybody that's joining us today. Lindsay, 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 let's talk about what it is that you do and how you created Storyhouse 15. What, what got you to the point you're at now? I want to hear the backstory. Yeah, backstory. So I started out, um, well, I've been in business. I've been a business owner since 2016. So I guess I'm going into my eighth year of business ownership. And before that, I worked in the, the realms of education, nonprofit marketing for 17 years. I'm also a mom of four. I've been married for 25 years. And I just front load that because my family shows up in every conversation that I have. So, because they're the most important things in my world. And so that's just, that makes up a part of who I am. Um, when I first launched my business in 2016, I kind of started out as most, I think many small business owners, many business owners in general, you know, I started out with a passion and a talent and I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to take those two and I'm going to launch my digital shingle. And so that's what I did and launched myself as a copywriter and did that kind of positioned myself that way for about three years and, you know, had a lot of success, grew my business, met my fi financial goals by year three. By the time I got to year three, I realized I, I don't think I'm really a copywriter. <laughs> I think I'm more than that. I'm, I'm stepping into my clients' lives in a way that's deeper than just helping them find the right words to say. And, really realize what got me to, to year three is not the thing that's going to help me continue to grow and continue to expand. Um, so that's when things kind of started to shift. That's the bud, you know, or the seed, the seed really started to be planted for me to start shifting. Um, and then this year launched myself, you know, I left, left my name, took my name out of the spotlight. I had kind of positioned myself just as Lindsay Hopmeyer took myself out of the spotlight to better position what it is that I do, which is coming up alongside my clients and helping them be the ones to kind of take their place where they need to go. And that is how Story House 15 got launched. Yeah, I appreciate that. We always want to hear the context of the creative journey, like how you became who you are today. Uh, so many of us want to connect with others inside of these communities, um, but sometimes it's a little intimidating, right? If somebody's got an online brand that's very well positioned and portrayed, and maybe you're still discovering where you're at. And I really appreciate the fact that you said you launched a business intending to be a copywriter, and then along the way discovered that you were so much more than that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's validating, right? It means you had some success. It means that things were going very well in your world. And now it was time to discover what that meant for your clients. And I think that that shift, that mindset to taking a deeper dive um, was intentional on your part. And correct me if I'm wrong, but that took you to that next level. Having that understanding, that perspective of what it means for your clients to take that deeper dive uh, really created the launch, the catalyst that it helped your business evolve. So talk to us about transitioning from copywriting to story copy. Like, what does that mean? And how can we better understand that? Yeah. So, you know, story copy really, for me, is the, it's the end, it's the end to the means. I think it's the end, you know, it's, it's that, that final destination, but what it really represents is this, all of this work that exists beforehand. And so, so really as, as business owners, and I guess, let me take the long way to kind of talk through this, if you don't mind and kind of get you to where, um, where story, story copy really kind of originates from as business owners. Um, what I, what I found in working with my clients is that, you know, they were at the same point that I kind of was at year three, they had, they had opened up their business, they had experienced some level of success, and now they were ready to up level. And at that point of up leveling, they were left saying, okay, what got me to point A is not the thing that's going to get me to point B, but I don't know how to get to point B. And by the way, I'm not even sure that I'm the same person to get to point B that I was with point A. And I don't know how to sort all of this out. Lindsay, will you help me? 
And they had tried all the things, right? They had tried the formulas, the fill in the blank templates. They had, um, you know, hired all the coaches and consultants. They had, they had done all of the things that were taught as business owners that we're supposed to do to grow our business. And they were still coming up short. And what I discovered is that it was almost always because they were looking for they were looking at their their messaging at their website copy kind of as the panacea for all of their problems and that is just ridiculously incorrect um i've had i've seen people have the worst websites in the world and have the most successful businesses and so i started to ask like where is that disconnect what is really going on and so that's when I said, you know what, we're going to push pause on finding the right words because it's not really about that. It's not really about the words. It's about your desire to step into your client's world and spark a transformation. It's about your desire to create meaning in the world around you. That's really why you're here. And so if that's true, if that's true for you and you're really here kind of for a bigger reason, then we need to go back deeper and start peeling back the layers of who you are so that you can make that human connection, that relational connection between you and your audience. And so that's what story copy is. It's that acknowledgement that this really isn't about the transaction. I mean, yes, we're all business owners. So transactions, profit, ROI, all of that stuff is, is inordinately important. Like I'll never say that it's not, but story copy like flips the script on our transactional mindset that we've been taught to lead with as business owners. And it's set, and it's just a reminder that this is really about relationship. And so everything you do, everything you say is exist to foster, to, to show up with the power of story, which is to foster relationships and to build cultures. Yeah, I love that. Especially talking about fostering relationships and building cultures. You know, you mentioned the human element as part of the reason why you transitioned to story copy. Um, and so many of us get in business and we don't know what we don't know, right? And we have to go through the minefield of discovering what do we like? What do we not like? How can we learn without feeling intimidated? How can we learn without falling too far, right? And giving up. Uh, and a lot of us exist in the space where we have these templates, these drafts of what should be or has worked in the past. And that's okay for a while, right? Um, but that's a shallow approach to business, right? Because everybody can set up an online template and just post a website and walk away and say, did it work? Well, it's not about that. It's about how do your relationships and your clients and your customers and that experience work? And why does that matter? You know, you released a fantastic um, article in your newsletter, uh, EndNotes, which I think people should definitely subscribe to, by the way, <laughs> um, related to this. It's this feeling of, discovering that you want more and you're uncomfortable with where you're at and that, that that's okay because that's human element, right? We have this one life. It's going to be the best life every day. It's the best opportunity, but how do we feel comfortable knowing that we're uncomfortable with where we're at and how do we flip that script and drive that story, that element that you're really providing to your clients, Lindsay. And I really, really appreciate you for that. So, you know, thank you for touching on that. I think it's a, a big deal when you're sitting down with a client, how do you go about discovering somebody else's story. Can you talk to us a little bit about that process? Yeah. You know, I'll be honest and say that there's a big piece of what I do that is just um, flat out intuitive, right? Like we all have gifts that we bring to the table. And so stepping into somebody's story and really peeling back and saying, okay, here's everything you're saying, but here's really what it's all about. So there's some of it that's just intuitive. But there's also pieces of it, I think, that any of us can learn. And it's really about a posture of how we're stepping into spaces. And so um, I recently kind of developed this framework, and it's just called the two-story framework. And it really speaks to this issue that we're all facing as, as just human beings in general, whether we're talking in business or life. What I have found is that we all have these two stories going on concurrently in our heads. And so when I step into work with clients, I'm looking at these two stories. And 
the first story is called the inside story and the second story is called the outside story and the inside story we can think of as like a selfie or as a mirror and the, that story are the pieces that we tell ourselves it's our values our beliefs you know all of the the the, the ideas and the experiences that we've used to kind of structure and build our worlds and it's it's the past stories that we've lived it's all of that stuff that's kind of all me focused. And then we have the outside story, which is more like a, a picture of us that's in a gallery that's been painted by somebody else. And that's the outside perspective. It's how our audience views us. It's how others view us. It's how it's how others step into our world and perceive us. And so in, in the business and marketing world, that those are things that we deal with, like, you know, from basic things like ROI and profit to uh, systems and, and scaling and funnels. That's all of the outside story stuff. And what I found is that these two stories are always going around in our heads, like who am I and how do other people perceive me? And very rarely do we have the tools to bring those two stories together. So let me paint a, a scientific analogy to maybe make to bring this home a little bit. So let's just step out of all things marketing and just imagine with me a brain. And, you know, we all know in our brain, we have a left brain and a right brain. And those two sides of our brains each have different, very specific functions. And for us to kind of be that fully optimized human like those need to work at their full capacity for us to be able to show up with all of our physical capabilities, cognitive, social, emotional, you name it. The thing about our brains is, you know, we have these two sides and the only thing that allows them to speak to one another is something called a corpus callosum. I'm not a neuroscientist. I'm not a scientist at all. So I'm not going to pretend that I know all of the details of what this thing is. But all I know is that it's a bundle of like 200 million nerves that do all of the work to combine our left brain and our right brain. And without that corpus callosum, we have two pieces, two sides of our brains that are not speaking to one another. What's fascinating to me about this corpus callosum is that it, sometimes it doesn't develop correctly. Sometimes it gets damaged. Sometimes even it gets intentionally severed for like people who are having seizures and doctors will go in and sever this piece, this, you know, however they do it. And about 60% of people who have issues with their corpus callosum, they have catastrophic issues, you know, physical um, issues, cognitive, you name it. They have big struggles because their corpus callosum is not working correctly. The other percentage of people kind of manage to figure out how to function in their world, maybe not normally, but pretty, pretty, pretty functionally. And so you, you might not necessarily know, oh, their corpus callosum must be damaged, but you might know something's not quite all working as it should, but they, they manage to, you know, live successful lives. All right. So picture that brain in the corpus callosum. Let's go back to this idea of the inside and the outside stories. In a brand story, we have those two stories, the inside story, the outside story. And I told you that oftentimes they're two separate stories. And oftentimes we're taught as business owners to keep those two stories separate. So it's like we have a bunch of business owners walking around building their businesses without a corpus callosum for their brand story. There's nothing that's joining those two stories together. And we're not taught that. Like you think of any coach, consultant, any course that you've taken. And oftentimes, even if we honestly assess who we are as people stepping into our spaces, oftentimes we're going to favor the inside story or the outside story. We're going to be somebody who teaches somebody how to get rid of their head trash or teaches somebody how to deal with their systems. Like we're, we are favoring one side or the other. And there's very few that are actually showing us as business owners, how to bring those two together. And that brand story, that is the corpus colossum essentially of the, of the two stories. And the, the actual piece of that story that I use for my clients to act as that corpus colossum, um, there's a couple tools. And one of the big tools that I use is this concept of worldview. 
um, worldview is the lens that we use to, to look at the world. It's the lens we use to make sense of the world, to move through it, to, to decide who and, and how we engage. We all have a worldview. And I think most of us are all familiar with the word worldview, but data and research shows that even though we all have this, we all have this corpus colossum, that worldview that's joining those two stories together. Very few of us are actually aware of what it is. Very few of us could actually say, well, Adam, actually, here's my worldview. Here's how I structure the world. Here's how I answer these questions of worldview. And because of that, by the way, now I'm able to, to combine that inside story and the outside story. Most of us can't do it. We accept the meanings of the world that are given to us. We just accept it. We just blindly move through it. We inherit the values, the beliefs, the convictions, and we don't take time to actually make sense of how does this actually influence the world that I'm building? So that is a long way to answer your question of how do you help clients find their story? That. I help them find the corpus colossum of their brand stories. I help them unite the inside story and the outside story by really focusing in on first and foremost, what is your worldview? Let's answer those questions and then we can go from there. Yeah, I love that. I love the the scientific background that you've given us to kind of create and bring this home because so many of us do inherit traits and alignments and the way that we feel uh, that we need to exist in the world as and then as we get out into the world we start interacting and really discovering our strengths we also begin to discover that there's missing pieces right there's there's something that's missing from our lives and it's that internal alignment that you want to build a different world than maybe you were gifted or given right um and i, I think back to they did an experiment with fbi sketch artists do you guys ever see this they would, they would bring somebody in and they would have a, a wall up and the person would describe themselves to the FBI sketch artist, right? And then they would bring in the person behind them and instead of describing themselves, they would describe the person they just passed in the hallway. Hmm. And the amazing difference between how other people see you and how you see yourself, uh, is it's enlightening because a lot of us are socially conditioned to maybe put ourselves down or we're too afraid to really acknowledge that we have strengths that we can brag about, right? And put out there. Um, and I think that what you're talking about there, Lindsay, is this ability to break through the free social, you know, or the fear, right? This, this fear that we might have, um, or even the conditioning that we've been given, fake it till you make it, do as somebody else did. All of these mantras, which are great to kind of get you going and motivated, but really don't solve the issue of, what does that mean for me? What is, right. what, what is my element? And how am I going to create this world? And how can I be okay with creating this world and moving forward and piecing these inherited dispositions and our new discovery together? So thank you for sharing that. I think there's so much power in that. Um, and before we get to your big three on, on kind of leading that dance, uh, Patty's got her hand up. So I'm going to open it up for her. So one of the things I, well, I loved everything you've said, Lindsay, like I always do. But one of the things I think that is really interesting here, what she's saying is like, I'm in marketing. So a lot of times when people are thinking about marketing and messaging and copy and all that, they're thinking of it from a sales point of view. Like, what is the messaging that I can give that's going to make people purchase my product or service that you're so passionate about, you know, that you want to help transform the world, Right. Then the flip side of us, we're all hearing all these messages about, oh, we need to be vulnerable and authentic and we need to be all that too. And so people think that means they're staring their short story, which a lot of times is just they're vomiting all over us, which is something that literally does not tell us what we need to know um, to really make a decision. And then inherently we have those people who will hire us and say, oh my gosh, I totally get your vibe. Like I, like you totally see me, you hear me, you get me. And like, what are those things? So I feel like what Lindsay really does is she helps you take all that together too. Like it isn't about just having good marketing messaging, look at what other people use and, and say, oh yeah, that fits me too. I should use those words because it's not about sales, right? So it's if it's your story, like what she's saying, how do you convey the vulnerability, the authentic, all of those things that make you you without just using, you know, let's just go to a thesaurus and come up with some really interesting marketing words because that just sounds good. 
And so what she really is able to do is to get into that and help you. And I have never known anybody my entire life that can do it like she can. So I have to tell you, I love the way you actually explain that to us because it's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, thank you for those comments, Patty. I think what you just uncovered there for us is the, is the next piece of this conversation, which is how do you bridge that gap, right? How do you find that alignment and move into a discovery of what your story really means? Because we all have character and we have people that surround us and our story is continually unfolding and evolving. But how do we take it to that next level? And Lindsay, you've got a great way. I think you ask three meaningful questions and you and I kind of talked about them. Um, and you helped me discover a little bit about what it is that you really pull out of people to to trigger or catalyze those changes. So do you want to share with us the, the three questions that you kind of dive into to get people yep. pulling in that direction? Yep. Yeah, these three questions, again, are the the foundational questions to any worldview. So there's attached to that idea of that corpus colossum. They're the connectors to the inside and outside story. And so they're the they're the piece that I start with. And obviously there's lots of other tools that come into play here. Um, it's not just a, hey, I asked these three questions and poof, we have the story. But I believe that when these th when people are in are invited into thinking through these three questions, it opens up the pathway for conversations that expose the stories that actually need to be shared. And then I use another tool to kind of run those answers through and say, okay, how you know it's called the authenticity flywheel that I created, and that really is like. It's like the the pushback, the outside story pushing back to say, okay, this is what your inside story told me. Now let's use this flywheel to see if you're really living it out. So it's those two, two tools in tandem. Um, so those three questions are, why am I here? What's gone wrong with my world? And what can I do to fix it? So again, no matter what your worldview is, these are the three questions that are central to any worldview and that you have to answer in order to have a thorough understanding of how you live and move and breathe through your world. Um, so these can get deeply philosophical, deeply religious, deeply how you name it. Um, but the why am I here and what's gone wrong with my world, I have found are often, those are often the can feel really easy to answer. Like, of course, I know why I'm here. And especially, of course, I know where to point the finger and to say what's gone wrong with my world. But then there's that third question of what can I do to fix it that reminds us, oh, we have the onus to actually fix the things we're complaining about, to fix the things that we've spotted as broken, like crap, I can't just be the critical theorist and scream, scream foul on everything that I see. I actually have to construct a solution to this, which is the charge of any business owner. As business owners, we are creators. Like we are artists to our core, essentially we are. And so as with that charge, we are responsible for creating something that others can step into. Um, and that's what those three questions really kind of open up um, my client's hearts and minds to and invite all of the pieces of the inside and outside story into those questions to say, okay, if this is how you see your world, let's, again, let's use, let's use this tool, the authenticity flywheel to really see, are you really, like the question I like is, um, does the way I conceptualize my why align with the way I'm actually living it out? Like, whoa, if that doesn't give you a gut punch in a few places, then you probably aren't being honest enough with yourself. Like, um, because I mean, we all want to be these huge world changers, but I'm not on a plane in, in a developing country, giving all of my time and energy and money, even though I'm passionate about those issues. So I have some aligning to do or some like bold honesty to do with how I'm actually living that out. I can't call it my why I can call it something that I care about, but it's not my why. So I think there's a lot of confusion sometimes with business owners, especially when it comes to core values and really naming what they what they believe uh, and what they live out and actually believing and living it out. So we work a lot in that area as well. Like, are these really your values? Are you really living this out? Um, and let's measure that against your outside story and see what's really happening. The, those are the three questions. I'll stop there.
<laughs> I, I love it. And I, I know we're asking a lot of your uh, secret recipe here. So thank you for sharing with us. I think that there's so much power in finding what's gone wrong in your own life. Um, and that doesn't mean specifically that there's just negativity and, and you know, tear down happening. It just means that your world isn't where you thought it would be. And that's your personal world, right? Because we all intersect, we all interact, we all learn and grow from each other. So I love you dive into that. But first you ask them, why are they here? You know, Mark Twain said, there's two days that matter in life, right? The day you're born and the day you find out why. Mm -hmm. And for some of us, that might be a recurring awareness. Maybe we've mm -hmm. evolved. Maybe we've tra transitioned in life. Maybe we've discovered that our world is meant to be something bigger, better, and more beautiful. And I really, really appreciate the fact that you bring it full circle. And you talk about business as an art form mm -hmm. and people taking home pieces of that art into their lives because when somebody has a great experience when somebody has a great outcome because you serve them and your alignment was right your world is right your purpose was right they take that experience home and it's imprinted and they share it and mm -hmm. it's art they're sharing that art business is art life is art and us intersecting that together is just a beautiful thing so i really really love what you do lindsay with having people not just dive into their why but discover how they can align their business in the way that they speak to the world with what their purpose is. I mean, it's just, it's such a beautiful thing. So thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I just read a book. It's called Art and Fear. It's this book, Art and Fear. I actually found it shoved under my daughter's dresser. She apparently had to read it for college, but it's a 30 year old book, 30 years old. I just discovered it. Um, and some of the things that you're referencing, Adam, you know, reading that article were inspired by this book. And one of the things that they said, and I wrote about this in my last newsletter, is that they wrote, the world is not yet done. And it speaks to what Adam was just referencing, that everything we create is is allowing others to expand their world. When we create something, when we give a service, when, when we show up with our greatest thought, our greatest gift, we are inviting others to step in and say, okay, let's make let's make your world a little bit bigger. Like that, the idea that the world is not yet done to me is profound. It is not a completed world. Like we are all, we are all adding to the world, making it bigger. And when you, when you understand that as a business owner, like I'm big on the, the idea of stories exist for two reasons. They exist to build culture or to preserve it. That is what storytelling exists for. We as humans are creatures of meaning. We are always seeking to, to find and to make meaning. And when meaning is discovered, cultures are built. And then the only way to preserve the, that meaning and those cultures is through storytelling. And as business owners, we are culture builders. That's what we're doing. Whether we're building cultures within our team, whether we're building cultures beyond us with our audience we are building a culture and so the stories that you tell ex exist expressly to build and to preserve that culture so you need to understand everything you can about the culture about the and that includes all of the five principles of culture which is what symbols are used what are we using to to make and declare and represent meaning what is the language that we speak? What are the beliefs that we hold, the values that we claim, and then the artifacts that we collect, the material goods that we are, are, are gathering ourselves around. And so those are all of the elements that we really need to understand both of ourselves and of others. It can't just be one of the two. We have to understand both of them and see how they collide because then that's when we can build our own culture. I really, I love that you brought it home with that because culture and community is a big deal, more so than any of us really know, right? The impact we have ripples out, um, but it's also a level of accountability. When you start with understanding that your job is to enhance the lives of others and build that culture, the community grows with you and that alignment stretches you in kind, right? It's reciprocating. Um, and that's just a beautiful thing, especially right now. So many of us are coming off of 2022 and starting off 2023 with different perspectives and understandings of we're going to let go of that fear. Or maybe we want to discover what's ahead of us, right? Or maybe we want to dive deep and really reignite why we got into business. And it's hard to do that if you're being held back or if, even if you're isolated and alone. Having the availability of a community that stretches your vision 
and upholds your level of culture and allows your world to expand, that's that's amazing. I mean, that right there is the definition of why we do what we do, right? Absolutely. Uh, and I just, I love and appreciate that that's how you support small business and your clients and really getting them into an environment where they feel confident enough to do that because confidence is key in that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I think we've had an amazing discussion, right? This is, it's a fresh start, a new year. A lot of people are really going to take this and really think like, what is my story and what do I want it to say? There's going to be a lot of reflection, uh, but beyond that, there's got to be action, right? There's got to be that next step. So people need to understand that we're a community. We have connections, we have capabilities, got to reach through the screen. Um, And one of the things we do, Lindsay, during these meetups is after we hear from amazing experts like you and leaders and influencers, we like to open it up because this is a community of conversation and engagement. So we're going to open it up to comments, kudos, and questions if you're okay with that. Absolutely. Yeah, I just, first of all, I'm going to start. I will give you kudos. (laughs) Uh, My mind is blown and I thought I knew what we were going to talk about today. Um, So I definitely am going to rewatch this. That's all I have to say. I'm going to open it up to the community members and and to leaders here uh, and see if they have anything they want to say. I'm just going to jump in. Um, Lindsay, you are incredibly profound um, and incredibly articulate. I super appreciate all of what you've said. And and being in working for a company where, you know, we our our goal is to help people to to um, be successful with their businesses, right? It's it's so interesting to me you talking about how we feel about ourselves and then how others perceive us. And I think that that is so true when I see a lot of our small businesses where they don't really convey who they are as people running their businesses, Mm -hmm. um, especially online. And I have been, and it's not just, you know, people who work with GoDaddy, but other businesses that I look at and look up on their websites. And I just, I just love that you connect the dots because I think especially when I meet business owners in, in person or virtually like this, and I get to know them and, and I think, oh my God, that is not, they're not represented in how they're portraying their businesses. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's just so valuable that you look at it, not only, yes, it is marketing and, and helping to tell a story, but if the story is, is done in a very compelling way, that's going to draw people in, right? And it's not only just for the first time purchase, it's for continual purchases. And um, so I just super appreciate all of what you said and, and, and what you do for, for your, um, for your business. Thank you. Yeah. You know, when, when we hear a lot in, in the business advice, you know, niche down, find your niche, find your people. And that can be feel really hard for any of us to do. And what, I, when, but when you do this work and it gives you permission to just say, you know what, this is who I am. This is what I stand for. Love it or leave it. It's like, there is no other path to take. So it might still be really hard. Like it's not saying I'm not, I do not promise that we're going to do this work and everything else with your business is going to be easy. Like that's just hogwash. That's a lie that doesn't exist, but it makes it more clear. It makes you more firm. It gives you your anchor that like, this is, this is who I am. This is where I'm going. So I'm going to, I'm going to keep my anchor here, keep directed this way. And that's where I'm going. And eventually that growth is going to come. It just simplifies some of those supposedly really simple solutions that we're handed as business owners. Yeah, thank you for that, Rachel. Great, great questions and comments. Um, Jonathan, you have your hand up and then Amy. Um, I just wanted to jump in quick and say that this, first of all, this I thought was fabulous. I love listening to you talk about how, um, I don't know if this is the right word, but your formulaic approach to working with your clients and to helping them to discover truths about themselves and about their business. And I feel like there's so many, I mean, there's so much that you said that I was able to jump on, but I my primary work is in social. Mm-hmm. And I really enjoyed the beginning of this presentation in um when you were, you know, you were talking about relationships and you were talking about how, you know, it's not about the transaction. It is about, it's always about the transaction. Like that's the, this is, that's the whole point. It's about the transaction, but there's been such a shift from 
acquiring business and earning business. Mm -hmm. And I think that's such a, that's the thing that I've seen specifically in my work through social is we are not, I'm not tracking conversions of sales to the website. I'm tracking how many people, you know, are saying this was very helpful. I learned something from, you know, from you, from this post, like GoDaddy has provided value to me in this way. And that is, that's already a transaction, right? It might not be a monetary transaction, but it could become one down the road, or it just could be collateral and word of mouth, whatever it might be. Um, I thought that was really, really profound. And I couldn't help but find a lot of similarities between you and Patty. <laughs> I could not help but listen to this and find a lot of similarities between you and Patty and the way that you... You don't just help people solve business issues. You help your clients with business issues. You help them see themselves in, in a different way. Mm -hmm. And I also, and then I'll stop, but I also appreciated that, that approach because I find it to be very, although it, you know, I, I'm sure it takes quite a lot of time and experience to feel very um, uh, confident in the approach. I, it's, it's, a, it's an accessible way for anyone to to get into this kind of business to get into any kind of consulting is having a blueprint to say you know what i can learn about people and i can use that strength of mine to kind of get my foot in the door and i i did i just i think i love when you know we finish we finish one of these and you just know that the re, you know the recap and watching it over again you're going to take so much away that you may have missed the first time i do i just i'm so grateful you were able to provide this value um for us today lindsay and it i i do i really really appreciate it Thank you. Uh, so, Lindsay, I, I also thought you just blew me away. And, and the geek in me really liked the Corpus Colossum. Mm -hmm. I had read a book about that and how it affects people when they, they have to cut it apart for the epilepsy uh, mm -hmm. situation that you had said. And I, I just really related to that and thought that was just such a great way to explain what you were talking about with the inside and the outside, as well as, you know, the stories you told about it with the, the drawing and whatnot. So, um, that was just really cool. Um, I'm just wondering, um, is this process that you go through, uh, is it just for uh, current business owners or is it something that you recommend for someone who's going to start a business? Like, like how much is this stuff that you should go through before and how important is it compared with what type of business you're, you're going to run? Is it like relevant to every type of business or is there sort of a, a place for it? If you could just speak to that a little bit. Please. Yeah, great question. Yeah, what I found is that this work is more about posture than it is about business, uh, industry, you know, specific niche, niche or niche or however you want to say it. Um, it's about a willingness to step in with a vulnerability and a, a level of transparency to go through the process um, and a willingness and a desire to to connect on a deeper level with the people you're trying to reach with the audience that you're trying to reach. So it's really about people who are seeking to make significant transformation in the lives of their audience, which is a pretty wide berth of people, I think, admittedly. So um, as far as new business versus, you know, been in business for a while, it, it just, it, Typically what I found is that sometimes it's really beneficial for new business owners to get a few scrapes and bruises before they go through this process to kind of struggle through some of that self-discovery and self-awareness and just overall business awareness on their own before they figure out, you know what, here's what really works for me. And here's what I really am not going to be doing because I, you know, when I first started out, I thought I wanted to, to niche myself into the SaaS world, which is not at all my primary niche. Like it just, it, it, I can't connect with the SaaS world in a way that I can with coaches, consultants, or other small business owners. So it's kind of hilarious, but I did that because I was following the, the trajectory and the path that all the business leaders were telling me to go, like, go here. This is where you're going to make the most money, Lindsay, do this. And so I did, and it didn't take me long to be like, ouch, that hurt, never doing that again. So typically it's best, yeah, it's best for business owners to have some experience before they go this deep into the process. That's not to say that's always the case. It could be somebody who has has run several businesses and now this is their, their a new business for them, but they're not new in the business world. Um, so just, it just depends 
the, the big answer is it depends. It depends on the, the, the life stage, the experience stage of the client. Um, but the more granular answer is, yeah, a, a couple years of a couple scrapes and bruises are really helpful before we go this deep. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, with what the story that you told that you were a couple years in before you had a, then you kind of had some stuff to look back on and say, where do mm -hmm. I go from here? Right. So, okay. Thank you. Yeah, so I do have to jump off now, but thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks Amy. It, these, these have been some great questions. You know, we brought up the fact that yes, business is about paying your bills. We have to have transaction to continue to have business running, but why does that matter? And where do you exist inside of that relationship? You know, Jonathan mentioned on that and then just bringing it full circle. We have such a diversity of people coming into the small business world now, especially mm -hmm. those that are being pushed off the cliff through layoffs or, or, or shrink downs or, or even just feeling uncomfortable in their position. Some people are lateraling from amazing corporate leadership, or maybe they were inside of a program where they were mentorship programs and they just understand that they want to go a little deep, a little deeper. They want to expand their world. Uh, so yeah, I can definitely see this being available for pretty much everybody from across the, across the globe. Just depends on whether or not you feel it's timely for you and necessary. We have to have some pain along the way. And I appreciate you, Lindsay, for saying that uh, you went down a, a particular line of sight in business and decided, nope, not, not for me. <laughs> yeah. Another piece that I've found this work to be really helpful for is business leaders who are running a company and they want to understand that culture story that's going on. Like maybe they're seeking some of their own professional development, their own growth. But when you step into that desire to grow personally and you're at the helm of your your own business and you're working with a coach to help you you know be a better leader to your business well that coach can only coach you based on your own perspective based on your inside story that you're giving to them and so if i can come in alongside and say okay let me dig into the inside story and the outside story and show you how it's all cohesive then that coach you're working with as a business leader can step into your space in a more profound and more efficient and effective way because now we have this more holistic story to work from that you didn't have before. And so that's a piece of my work that's evolving and growing as well, which I'm really excited about. Yeah, I appreciate that. Patty? I think one of the things that I think is really important here too, um, which was really an eye opener when I first met Lindsay, is how do you define story, right? You know, I mean, all of us feel like, oh, if you ask a hundred people, how do you define story? There'll probably be at least 75 different answers <laughs> to that of how people define how to tell their story. And a lot of it means they think that, oh, you know, you'll understand if I just tell you, here's where I've been. And that's where a lot of people think, right? Oh, this is where I've been. I overcame this. And so because of that, I can help you. I've seen lots of coaches think that makes them a coach just because they've been through it themselves, which literally does not. But for that, right? So what is the story? And so I think that the newer person coming in doesn't understand maybe until they've been beat up a little bit, like Lindsay said, the value of being able to tell the right story. Like what you said, taking the inside and the outside and making that into the right story to tell that really portrays what it is that you actually really want to say in not just a heartfelt way, but that's an effective way to actually get you to the transformation that you want and the transformation you want to provide to your client as well, right? And so I think probably the most profound thing here is that is the difference between copy and story copy because it's really all comes down to one thing. What's the story that you want to tell or is it the story? It's kind of like what's truth, there's truth and then there's truth, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that Lindsay is able to take the story you want to tell and the story that it is and make that be in the way that you want to serve. So I feel like I've never met anybody who does what Lindsay does but in the way she does it as well. So there's value there, but sometimes people don't understand the value of story because their definition isn't the same, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, that's, that, that makes total sense. There's a process of discovery there and there's 
sometimes some perspective that's necessary. And I, I really appreciate you, Patty, for talking about how effective you see that this is. The word effective is, is a powerful thing when you can actually take something that you've learned and really put it into place. So again, back to that action step. You know, we're at the end of our hour here um, and we've had a great conversation and I wish we had more time to continue this. But Lindsay, you are amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you for sharing your voice with us today and a little bit into how and why you're helping people to discover a bigger possible world for themselves um, and really be okay with that. So thank you for that. Where can we send people to connect with you before we close this out? They can find me at my digital home, storyhouse15.com. Um, get on my email newsletter there, or they can find me at LinkedIn. Um, I'm on there you know, at least once a week and have a newsletter there as well that I post. And so those are the two places to find me and to get access to my resources and to just learn a little bit more about my process. Yeah, I appreciate that. And thank you for calling it your digital home. I think that that is such a cool way to uh, describe your website. And Elena's, you know, she's closing us out with a comment in the chat here. She said, she's so fortunate that you're here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So smart and really appreciate what you shared with us today. So. <laughs> thank you, Elena. Yeah. Thank, thank you to everybody that joined us today. And thank you to the community members that are going to listen to this later. Uh, definitely, definitely have a wonderful weekend. And remember, it's the start of a new year, start of a new story. Don't be intimidated. If you need some help, reach through the screen. There are amazing professionals in the community that can help you. So you guys have a wonderful weekend and thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Thank Great you. Bye. Bye. Good to see you.